What is going on, everyone? My name is Joseph Reynolds, and today joining me is Mr. Shane and Coakley. Obviously, two big fights ahead for yourself. Middleweight title fight on K Cage Legacy, even, and then APFC as well in Manchester this year. Ahead of those two fights, and a great way to finish the year for yourself. How are you feeling for everybody? Good, yeah, can't wait. Um, took, took a little break off there after uh, my last fight. Just my body was sort of breaking down on me. I had a lot of fights in six months. I had seven fights in six months, I think. Um, so I just needed a break, and now now I'm back, and I'm, I'm firing on all cylinders now, and feel really, really sharp. Feel sharper than I've ever been in the gym. So I, I can't wait for these two fights coming up now. Yeah, and as well throughout pretty much your entire amateur career, you've always been incredibly active, and it's sort of a big part into why you're sort of at this level already in terms of the fights that you are getting. But to be having sort of two fights booked at the same time, and then the past, obviously, as you mentioned there, the activity that you've had beforehand as well. How has that sort of been in terms of developing in this sport? And how has it been overall as an experience for you? Um, Good. Like, me development has been sort of like... Uh... Fast, like fast tracked a good bit like like I've um because I'm like I'm not even a year fighting amateur now like me first amateur fight was the end like I think it's two weeks last year so like like me development has come on a lot I've been trying training hard since you know like them last few months there were the only months I've actually looked back and I've taken off and maybe a week week or two at Christmas as well. But other than that, like it, it was always training for a fight, had something up. So it was good to just have nothing coming up for once because it, it was needed, like, you know. And um, even just tipping away in the gym with no fight coming up, that's the thing when you get your most improvement. But now that I'm back in camp now again, I feel like I'm, I'm improving even more. Like, like I'm applying myself to every single training session and I'm trying to learn off everyone that I'm with. Like I'm, I'm in DCA training with the like the strikers there, the lads, but I'm also like training with other MMA fighters in different gyms and picking up bits off them. I'm out in Rhino picking up bits off like pro high level lads as well. And you know, I'm I'm re really coming on now and I feel like even like even me striking, I know I'm known for me striking, but I feel like even me grappling is coming to a high level now as well. So like don't don't be shocked. Hundred percent, and as well in terms of looking at the last, I believe it was the Charlie Lynch Spence fight on UKFC, but obviously that was a really high level fight there. I mean, you look at both yourself and him. Obviously, he's at the top of his divisions, and then you shown as well. You belong to be in that position as well. But in terms of the biggest differences from that fight into what we can expect to see in the future, in terms of the gap that you had as well without a fight, but do you feel as though it's going to be a big difference? And what do you feel are going to be some of the most showing differences when you are inside the cage? I think I think everything's everything's gonna be different. Like even my mindset going into this one is different. That's a big one. Like I'm going into this with a different mindset. Like I'm not going in here thinking, right, I, I need to win, I need to this. I'm going in here and I, I wanna hurt Brian Man and like I wanna, I wanna put a horn on him. That's that's why I'm going in there. I'm going in there now with every fight and I just wanna put a horn on people. I want I want them I want them to hit people and for them to feel it. I'm not going in here now to try and get a win whatever way and Sometimes I felt like in my last few fights I was just focused on winning, more, not more so than putting on a good performance and trying to improve. So that that's that's what I'm doing. I'm going in there and I'm going into hoard people, whether whether that's Brian fell fell on fighting an APFC after that. Like I'm going in there to put a horn on people, and that's like that's not just standing up. Like if I want to take you down, I'll take you down. Like I feel like my wrestling's that good that I can't start sort of taking people down now and putting it on them grappling wise. But I also have no problem standing with people and showing people the level of striking and the level of striking has gone to since. 100%. And as well, you mentioned now, obviously, there's a striking background that people are aware of and as well, the grappling in terms of that you've also mentioned as well. So to know that you are comfortable in any sort of facet where the fight could go as well. And then it's also having a different style to most of the fighters in the divisions that you are sort of competing in at the moment as well. Do you feel as though matchup-wise there isn't really a fighter like you that you can find that can even somewhat emulate sort of the same similar style to you that you've got? I think, to be honest with you, I think Charlie Lynn Spence is probably the best lad around that has a sim has a similar style, style to me. Like, he kicks a lot, he has good hands, he has very good grappling as well. And I feel like I showed in that fight that we were so close, edging up, and then like that, I think one of the commentary, I think Aaron Abbey said it in the commentary, he's like, it's going to take something like a split thing here. 
and he landed the left body shot and obviously hurt me with the left body shot and that just changed the whole fight. But I felt like up until that, we were so evenly matched because our styles are so similar. And uh, like it just shows, like look where Charlie is now. You know, you know, like he's beating everyone in the UK. Like I don't know if he's gone pro or not, but like I, I'd not no problem taking that fight again. I know he finds it hard to get matched. Um, or I get in there, and that's no disrespect to him. That's just like I'd love to go in and test my skills again against him. But yeah, like I think he's a he's a high level person that has a similar style. Other than that, I feel like there, there's no one that has a sort of similar style to me that can use his kicks to set up hands and. It's comfortable just kicking like with MMA. Like a lot of lads fear kicks in MMA because they feel like they're gonna get taken down. I I'm comfortable there. I'm I'm comfortable to blast the kick at you. And if you want to catch it, go catch it. I believe in me take down defense that you're not gonna take me down off it. So I'm trying them and I'm trying them to hurt you. Hundred percent. And then as well, sort of looking at this cage legacy cage legacy middleweight title fight as well against Brian Manning, obviously speaking to him, he says it's a puncher versus kicker about, but in terms of your opinion and what you think this fight is a little bit, what does that look like to yourself? Puncher versus kicker, we'll see, I can throw hands as well, he just, obviously whatever he's looked at, he doesn't think I can throw hands, but I'll show it, I can, I can kick, I can punch, I can grapple, I can do that, and so, uh, I don't, I don't mind. Like I'll, uh, I'm not going in there thinking it's just me kicking, just him punching. I'm going in there thinking uh, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to finish him. I'm gonna, if he gives me his neck, I'm gonna take his neck. If he gives me his arm, I'm gonna break his arm. Like I'm going for Anton in there to finish. So it's it, for me, it's going out, looking at what he's doing, trying my shots, whatever lands, I'll continue to land, and I'll, I'll, I'll look in the hurt and bad. I'm, I'm not looking to think about this fight in a way that it's. This versus this, I'm going out there just to try and put Horton on him. That's all. Yeah, and, and as well, obviously, he he also sees a fight in terms of, in the sense of it being a war as well. Is that something you're not seeing? Are you looking for the finisher? In terms of just in general, how you do see this fight playing out? What does that look like a little bit? Like I, I could sit here and tell you, it's going to be a fourth round knockout, or it's going to be I'm going to finish him in two. But I, I don't believe in that. To be honest, I'm going out there and I'm looking for anything to finish him. You know, uh, and that could be that could be in the first twenty seconds. That could be in the last twenty seconds of the round of the last round. That could be anything. But like, if it, if it ends up having to go to war, I can go to war better than anyone. And if it ends up being a striking match, I can strike better than anyone. If it's ba- grappling, I can grapple better than anyone. I know I can on my day. So. I'm prepared. I'm prepared to dominate wherever it goes. I'm not thinking that's going to be a war because a war is back and forth. I, I'm going in there planning to dominate. I'm not going in there to like get hit to give a shot back or this. I'm going in there to absolutely dominate it for you. I'm not going in to, you know, have a back and forth scrap and get shots. At the end of the day, we're in a we're in a dangerous game. You don't want to take an, any damage, any unnecessary damage. So I'm in there not to get hit and hurt him. Yeah, and, and as well, obviously, in terms of these next two fights, one's the cage legacy middleweight belt, and then the, the next one in APFC, it'll be a big show and a big card and a big fight as well for yourself. So, obviously, you've had a lot of fights pretty much since the start of your amateur career as well. So, some people may be thinking, pro, you could go pro next. Or, or do you still feel as though for yourself that there is a lot you want to do as an amateur and that the pro thing it's not as close as people may first think looking at your record? Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm not like. I'm not rushed to go pro at all. Like, I think. I think going pro early is a big mistake that people make, and it doesn't show in the first few pro fights. But I feel like after a few pro fights, and when the level steps up, that's when you can see like fighters that have gone pro too early, are are being found out. So I, I'm not. I'm not in no rush to go pro. If my coaches think feel the need like if my coaches feel that oh, I'm good enough to go, I'll go pro. I'll listen to them no matter what. Like they're the ones that know, not me. But I, I'm just gonna take fights until there's no more fights to take. And then if Andy says to me, "Look, we think you should go pro," I'll go pro. But I'm in no rush at all. Like, like all my main China partners are pros, and that's that's where I am. I feel like I'm at that level, but I, I've no problem staying amateur for a bit, getting the experience up, and. Uh, eventually then no rush maybe end the next year year after probably but definitely want to get a few amateur titles under my belt first and uh go from there I might do an IMAF as well I'll see like I'll see how I'm feeling with that as well so that's just yeah, us. 100% and you mentioned there as well in, in terms of the IMAFs and 
obviously it provides that sort of different experiences to what you would normally get just competing on the regional scene in terms of the traveling abroad which I have done obviously when you come over to England and compete but in terms of that style is that something that you do see yourself doing or again as you mentioned there is it just something that completely depends on how things start to go for you the next couple of months yeah like like I saw it depends on how things go because like at the end of the day, the the IMAX are grand and all. Like they're they're great. Like wherever you go, you get to go to a world or a Europeans. But it's not emulating what pros like. You know, you're not get like you're not walking out into a packed venue. You're not like you've shin pads on. You've stuff like that. It's not emulating where I want to go. Like oh, I'm looking to really go far, far in this game. Like I'm I'm trying to go far, and you know the best thing to do, from my opinion, is to emulate like the pro game. So no shin pads. Uh, big crowds, cages, you know, that that sort of thing is what I want to emulate. But in saying that, it would be nice to go over and test the level out, like, because I, I'll never know, like, what my level is compared to someone from, say, uh, say Kazakhstan or Russia or Ukraine, you know, these sort of nations that, the Eastern European nations that are meant to be these really, really strong wrestlers and have a lot to their game, like, like not saying it in a cocky way, but I'd love to go over and just see, like, how far ahead or, how far behind are they compared to me in terms of striking or in terms of wrestling? So that's why that's why the IMAF interests me in that sort of way. I'm going over there and I, I want to know what the level is and, and improve because of it. But if there's like one or two big amateur title fights in England or the UK at the same time as an IMAF, like I, I know what I'm going to pick. But if there's a good break, a good run up to the, to the IMAFs and there's no sort of shows in the round that like uh, I definitely would, like I'd be interested in doing it. Yeah, and then as all you sort of mentioned there in terms of the emulating the pro scene, you mentioned with the crowds as well. Obviously, sometimes competing in Ireland, I'm, I'm sure there's more fans there for yourself than if you come to England. Though it may be the same, they may all follow you over as well. But is there definitely a difference in feeling the crowds when you are competing in Ireland and in England? And do you feel as though there's one you thrive off of more or is the crowd something that, regardless of what the crowd's doing, you're able to sort of deliver the same performance as you have been? Yeah, no, the crowd, like... I play into the crowd a small bit, as in, I I I love when a crowd hates me because it's like right, I'm in enemy territory. Like let's let's shock people here, you know that type of way. But I also love when people are shouting for me and screaming for me. And I've had two really good career performances. Like I fought in Dublin in December and won by armbar in the first round, and that was with like I think our gym and fires all together sold like four hundred fifty tickets or something. Like if you combine us all together, we did. Then you go to Belfast. And I fought uh, my second fight. Your man I fought sold nearly 100 tickets himself. And like that, went out, got a first round knockout there. So it really just depends. Like, you know what I mean? I, I can use the crowd to my advantage no matter what they're chanting, no matter what they're into. But I love fighting in the UK and like even just going traveling because, you know, it takes you out of that mindset. Like you're, you're going over, you're in a hotel, you're all you're thinking about is the fight for as soon as you get onto that plane. As soon as you go to that airport, all you're thinking about is the fight and you're going into enemy territory and there's just something about it that gets my like gets me mind going about and I'm like, yes, I can't wait. Whereas sometimes if you're in Dublin, you know, you're getting about your day, your normal life, you, it's the fight can sort of like you're like, Oh yeah, I'm fighting on Saturday, Jesus. You know, that type of way. Like so there's a difference. So I think it sort of just zones you in when you're going traveling for fights. <laughs> yeah, and as well, just one of the final few things for myself is obviously we've got the APFC fight. We know who owns the show in terms of Anthony Pettis and seeing sort of the buzz already around this show. Obviously, little announcements have been here and there. People have seen that you are on the card as well. So to compete on this show, it's the first time they've come over to a, to a different country to be on that card. And then also see where some of the guys on that show have gone as well. And other shows that you've fought and seen where they've gone. What does it sort of mean to you to already be in these positions where your name is sort of in the same category as some of these that have been? Cage Legacy Champions, if you to win that belt, and then also APFC as well. What does that sort of mean to already be in those sort of positions? Uh, it just, I think it just shows the level I'm at. Like, that's all it, it does. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the fact that I'm on APFC sort of shows that uh, I'm doing something right. If these big shows want me on and they want me fighting for titles and they have me up the card, you know, I'm obviously interested to look at and I've obviously a few eyes on me. So that that's what it means there. But it, do, it doesn't change me work ethic like my work ethic is always the same like I'm putting in time in the gym I'm putting in graft with everything and I'm uh, just trying to get better so when these shows recognise me it's like it's good but I'm I'm not too focused on it you know I'm just I'm looking forward to it I was actually I was actually looking at the venue 
venue was meant to be huge. I think I think there was like a cage warriors in, it and I seen a photo, and it looked big. So can't wait to go and uh, perform in front of such a big crowd, and uh, hopefully get get a knockout as well. Uh, definitely, I believe the venue fits it fits around nearly four thousand people now. I believe so. It's oh, definitely yeah. a big venue as well. So and then just the the final thing for myself is. Obviously, I would normally say what people can expect to see in your next fight, but you've got more than one booked at the moment. So for the rest of this year, if though people haven't seen Shane and Coley before inside the cage, what is it that they can expect to see if they tune into your next couple of fights? From now on, you're going to see Kogo 2.0. You're going to see a completely different Sen and Coley. So forget about me last few fights, the wins, the losses, everything. You're going to see a brand new me, and I'm coming in there, and you're going to see me coming coming for the stoppage. Nine minutes out of nine minutes, I'm in that cage fighting and, and I'm looking to hoard people. Whether that's four fights for the end of the year, three fights, two fights, whatever. I'm just taking fights and I'm going in there and I'm looking to put a horn on someone. Whether whether I'm taking them down, locking them up and smashing their face or whether I'm on the feet, hitting, moving, going forward, hitting everything. So I'm, I'm coming to hoard people. That's what you can expect. 100%. Well, that is everything from myself. You would like to take a chance to shout your sponsors, teammates, anything like that. Obviously, feel free to go ahead. Yeah, so shout out to Two James, Rhino, DCA, and shout out all my sponsors, uh, Gateway Shield Accommodations, Enche Asian Restaurant, Soul Food, uh, Fizzy Cure, Rise and Grind Coffee, and AD Nails. Every single one of you is, is uh, mean the world to me, and thanks so much for supporting me all the time. There we go. Well, as always, I really appreciate your time today. Obviously, Coco 2.0, you heard the man himself. Tune into his next few fights. They're always a pleasure to watch. I really appreciate your time today, buddy. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Joe. Appreciate it, Ray. Thank you.